So I've had no briefing here whatsoever. I'm just supposed to click through the slides and give a talk. Yep. Scientific or otherwise. Yeah. Good luck. Have fun. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank God you're here. <laughs> yeah. I did nominate you to do this, Frank. I don't know what happened to that email. It disappeared somewhere. Fortunately, in a former life, I did actually work in a gene therapy laboratory. So I've actually got a slight up here. Bad luck, not enough research done. <laughs> So, gene therapy in mouse models of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Well, as you can see, the top graph here is not the evolutionary tree of mankind. This is actually a photograph of a growing child with muscular dystrophy. And you can see the abnormal posture of the child due to a genetic defect in the muscles that uh, allow these muscles uh, not to form and to develop strongly. And, Essentially looking around the room, particularly at Frank, I think there are members of the audience that probably have this abnormal muscle development and have gone undiagnosed, tragically. Uh, in its very severe form, you see here, and certainly no humour associated with that slide, but here we can see a mouse that has this, and, uh, well, I would call that in our lab phenotypically normal, but obviously in this context it's seen as having a severe muscular dystrophy. So, folostatin, as we know, is a, a signalling molecule uh, that's involved in fibrosis, and clearly folostatin plays a critical role in the fibrosis in this phenotype, so I believe. And looking at the mouse here, so this is a control mouse, and this is a folostatin mouse, which actually looks to me as though it's been mislabeled and it's actually been on large doses of anabolic steroids. <laughs> You can see huge increase in muscular mass, and again, not, not obviously evident around this room, although I know Seb Dworkin's been working hard in the uh, gym to get close to this. But you can see massive increase in muscular mass. But unfortunately, this muscle is totally ineffective. It's unable to lift 50 pounds on a barbell, uh, despite the massive hypertrophy. Uh, and so we have essentially, although muscle increase in mass, we don't actually have improvement in muscle function. And interestingly enough, the molecule that emulates folostatin activity, shown up here, uh, delivered by an AAV vector, um, is able to differentially affect healthy muscle from muscle derived from the phenotypically apparently normal mice. So you can see up here, here's a wild type mouse uh, on one leg, used brilliantly as a control, and that's the perfect example of why you use legs, because you have two of them, one which you can use as the normal control, and one as the experimental model. Very difficult with bone marrow, we haven't worked out how to do that yet. Uh, but you can see in the wild type mouse, we have the weak, flimsy right leg, and now with the AAV vector, massive hypertrophy of the left leg, and I can tell you that mouse can kick a football about 70 metres with that leg. But in the MDX or the DKO mouse, we see absolutely no response. And so although this muscle uh, is uh, treated with the same vector, it fails to develop the response. And that is absolutely evident on this immunohistochemistry study using the widely abundant FST antibody that needs no further explanation to this audience. <laughs> Shown below is the immunofluorescence. And really, that's the data you dream of. It just completely mirrors exactly what we've seen in all the above slides. And that's <laughs> fairly self-evident. <laughs> so I think most of you have had the burning question on the tip of your tongue, what is this disproportionate response related to? And I must admit that was the first thing that struck me when I looked at the previous slide, what could it be due to? And I think there's no question that it relates to transgene retention. <laughs> so if you look at the relative level of the vector in the genome, in the lovely uh, pale blue here, uh, you can see that it's substantially higher than either the wild type or the double knockout mouse, and that is clearly a, a mark of the number of, stop taking those photos, <laughs> the number of vectors within the muscle genome. And of course, we all look for validation with multiple techniques, particularly if they're a blot and not a graph, which can, anyone can particularly make. And this is a beautiful graph showing evidence of the FST317, uh, which is clearly upregulated in the NBX, but not the double knockout. So, I hope this is the final slide because I'm pretty much out of everything. <laughs> uh, yes, it is. So the conclusions are clearly that the AAV vector has great therapeutic potential. Think of that left leg on the wild type mouse. Think of that on the half forward flank. I mean, that is clearly a great response. And I'm fairly sure that the Essendon Football Club have organised this to be introduced into their pre-seasonal program for next year with the two players that are available to play for them. 
Um, we have mild and severe uh, uh, models of Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and they have a distinctly different response as shown by that lovely pale blue graph and the pink one next to it. And the discrepancies uh, stem from the obvious, which everyone in the audience uh, realised anyway, that it is really loss of vector genomes over the treatment period. So I'd love to say I'd be happy to take questions, but that would be an absolute flat, <laughs> frank lie. So thank you so much.